Hello and welcome to another video. In today's video, I jump on the Timu bandwagon and unbox some miniatures, hopefully suitable for my future late Georgian style cabinet house. Starting off, I got these nail art detail brushes because I thought they would be good for painting incredibly small details on miniatures. And I did get a couple of doll making things. This is a Russian, um, I think they're called Matryoshka dolls. They're nesting dolls. You see, so you open it up, and <laughs> the inside fell out. Um, but there's another doll inside each one of these until eventually you get down to the smallest one. And they're usually painted really nicely um, with a lot of folk art florals and things that I really enjoy doing. You may not know this, but miniatures are not my primary thing that I do. In fact, I don't have a primary thing that I do. I do a lot of different things. And so painting on these uh, wood pieces to make dolls will be fun. I also got these peg dolls here to hopefully make some little people eventually for the Eternal Bookstore um, room box. Here are some caviar beads also for nail art, but these are great for a lot of other things when you're making miniatures. You can see these other ones on the right that I got on Amazon. They're quite a bit bigger than the ones that are made for nail art. And I'm gonna show you something that I do with those later in this video. Here are some precision tweezers. I always check to make sure that the tips line up and these are supposed to be like anti-static tweezers. And you know, as you probably know, when you're working with miniatures, you can never have enough pairs of tweezers. So I jumped on those. I think it was like $2 for these three tweezers. So that was a great deal. They're metal, they're good quality. This is the first of three glass like jars that you would use in the kitchen. And I don't know if they had this kind of glass in 1805, but I figured I would give these a try for my kitchen. They are made out of glass and miraculously made it all the way from China, despite being wrapped up touching inside of that bubble wrap. So there's three of those. See, look how they were wrapped. Isn't that crazy? But they're totally fine. They're about an inch and a half tall, which would make them a foot and a half tall in real life. And I have had some that big. So this is a terracotta vase of some sort. It has like grapes on it. It is made out of some kind of a ceramic or resin. And that should work out well in the, in the kitchen. Maybe there would be vinegar in that or something like that. It's a little bit shorter, so it's about an inch and maybe a quarter tall. This was supposed to be a toolbox. It's made out of wood. It's pretty nice quality. I don't know if I'll use it for a toolbox or if I'll use it as part of the um, maybe a cleaning caddy of some kind. It's quite big. Now this is the first of three ceramic jars that have corks in them. And I thought I could possibly maybe put a little fabric on the lid or something so that it would look like um, jam or something. And now I bought a lot of little brass trinkets that were not billed at all as dollhouse miniatures, but I thought that they might work as decor, say in the library of my Georgian cabinet house. So here's like an Asian tree like a bonsai tree and it's about an inch and a half tall which would make it about a foot and a half tall in 112 scale some of the things that I bought for that 
uh, in that category worked out and some of them didn't. This is in no particular order though. So here is the first of two sets of feet, box feet that I bought to go on the bottom of room boxes. Now, normally these would be for say jewelry boxes or something, but I think they can really elevate a room box, especially if you're displaying it on a shelf where people can see all of the edges. I was missing one screw. Now this particular one is corners. So it goes on the corners of a box. So see like this. So for my eternal bookstore conversion, my corners are not box corners because I put it on a base. And so these ones wouldn't work, but I will show you some that I got later in the video. All right, now this I thought could be like a loving cup or some kind of an award if the man of the house maybe was a, I don't know, maybe he owns a racehorse or something. It's quite large. And again, it's not billed as a dollhouse miniature. It was just as a brass miniature. I think if you just search brass miniatures, you'll find it. Now this is a sewing box. I think I thought I was getting the jewelry box like the one that um, Queen City Minis unboxed in her Timo video, but I really like this a lot. It's very hard to get sewing notions small enough for 112 scale. And I think I may end up buying another one of these to tear apart and try to make into a tea caddy. The only thing I don't like about it is the back, the hinge is just fabric, but I do have some miniature hinges and someday I will be replacing that hinge. But that will come after we move. Here is the blue, so that's number two of three, and then the third one is brown. I'll talk more about our move at the end of this video when I talk about the future of the channel. Now this thing was billed as a dollhouse miniature fruit bowl. And I'm like, that's a pretty ornate fruit bowl. Um, and it's, it's fine. It's metal. I, I, I guess I like it, but I think I'm going to have to distress it a little bit to make it slightly less garishly. I mean, you know, if, uh, if somebody had a, a silver bowl or a gold bowl sitting on their table in a, upper class home, it wouldn't be tarnished, but I need to just make it a little bit less yellow. These are Swedish doll horses. These are not dollhouse miniatures. I thought I might be able to paint these and put them on a shelf somewhere in the Georgian room box. I mean, in the Georgian cabinet house, maybe our man of the house picked them up in Sweden when he went on his grand tour. I'm just finding something to use for scale. So I don't know, maybe maybe I'll even just put them in the nursery. And then this is one of the brass miniatures that didn't really work out. Um, it's just too big. I don't think anyone would really have a foot long <laughs> brass frog sitting on the shelf in their library in 1805. So I'll just display that in one of my plants like I do. Um, now this is my favorite. This is so hilarious. I'm dying laughing. Um, <laughs> I don't know if this is Diana or, um, Aphrodite, but whoever she is, I have to laugh because she's hunched over and <laughs> it's just cracking me up. When you look at her from the front, it, it looks fine. But when you look at her from the side, she might have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome like I do because her neck is hunched over and, um, it just, I'm just like, yeah, this is a fail. Like, I, I think I could face her forward and maybe no one will notice, but I don't know. So here's the third ceramic jar. <laughs> and I was just testing. This is like that plaster resin stuff. Um, I was trying to see if maybe I could, maybe I could make a mold out of it or something and then make it a little bit less tall and make her have better posture. We'll see. This I bought specifically for the glass dome because I want my library and my cabinet house to be kind of like um, full of treasures that the man of the house maybe picked up on his travels. And so I'll be trying to find something to go inside of that. And it is glass. Um, it's quite tall. So maybe there's a I can get a miniature statue or maybe I could put like a toy soldier or something in there. We'll see what I can come up with. This is a little silver basket, like a little silver fruit bowl or something that would be sitting on the table, maybe um, the dining table. And it is metal. All right. 
next up is one of my favorite things. This is a set of copper kitchen cooking utensils that hangs on this hook um, apparatus, which I really, really like. It's definitely high quality, made of metal, very heavy. Uh, the only thing is it has holes for hanging, but it didn't come with any hardware. So maybe I can use some screws from one of my miniature hinges to hang that up. You can see the size compared to my glass jars. So yeah, I really like that. I don't know if they'd have like a hamburger spatula like that one, but who cares? It'll be, it'll be fine. All right. Now here are two very, very heavy Chinese. I think they might be, I can't tell if they're foo dogs or foo lions right now. Um, but I thought those could be decor and maybe they would sit on either side of the front stairs. This is a really nice little spice box. And the only thing I don't like about it is these are seed beads and the lower right hand one is sticking out like a handle, but the rest of them are lying flat and you can see the holes. So I might be filling those in with some of those caviar beads from, uh, not from the nail art, but from a little bit larger. All right, here are those other feet. I really like these little feet. They can go on the bottom of pretty much anything and there's nothing sticking up up from the top to obtrude. So I pretty happy with these. And again, the screws for this are exactly the same as the screws from the other feet. So I'm just gonna put them in the same little container. I wish Timu would send the screws in a little bag or something, just because I'm pretty sure I must have lost that one screw from the other set when I was opening the container, because I certainly didn't imagine they would just be loose in there. I keep a lot of these little snapshot containers around so that I can sequester items like this. And this is what these feet would look like on a little box. All right, what's next? By the way, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you the clothing and jewelry that I ordered, not very much. This is a um, little straw hat that I thought I could use to make a small bonnet. It's obviously way too big for the scale. Um, you can unpick these. They're kind of like a length of straw braid that's just sewn around like there. You could undo those stitches and um, remake it. You can just see the scale here is quite large. This is a doll I've been making from a pattern I got on Etsy. All right, drum roll please. My favorite thing that I bought is this chest set and I plan on making this into a table so it be like a gaming table and have fancy legs and all that. It's very heavy duty. It's made from metal. It does have kind of a sticker, a glossy sticker on top there that's got some damage to it. But in some ways, I'm happy that that happened because that means I can change out the sticker. And I thought I might be able to make the other side of this table have a, maybe backgammon or something on it. And you just flip it over. Um, on the legs. It has all the appropriate little pieces and I'm not going to really show you them in a huge amount of detail because they're so tiny and hard to handle and I think that I will have my husband set this up once the table is finished with the museum wax sticking these pieces down because it would be an absolute nightmare to accidentally knock this over inside the dollhouse and then try to set it up again. They're just very difficult to manage even with tweezers. And again, this sticker can come off and I can replace it with one that's not glossy and is a little bit less modern looking make myself a little funnel to get these pieces back into the world's smallest Ziploc bag. Why couldn't they put the screws from the feet in these little Ziploc bags? That would have been helpful. Okay, so in terms of what I bought for the doll's house, I'm going to give these miniatures a 7 out of 10. So 7 out of 10. I think for the most part what I picked was fine, but... Um, the scale is still a little bit off. Now this is gonna be very short. I did purchase three articles of clothing, two sleeveless tops and one t-shirt, and I am displeased. This trim is nothing like the color of the trim in the photo, and on all three of these shirts, the fabric is this cloyingly <sighs> silky 
heavy, almost swimsuit material, which I find to be gross on the skin. I just really don't like it. Um, so I'm, and then here's the other thing. I get fed these pictures all the time on Pinterest and they look great because they've stolen the picture from whoever the original designer of this clothing is. And it's almost as if they have taken that picture and printed the shirt onto this weird fabric. So not pleased. Um, for reference, I'm a size XL in the US and these all had to be size 3X for them to fit on me. Now I did buy these nail polish strips, which are really legitimately just stickers, full on stickers. They're not made from nail polish, but I will say that I've had these purple ones here on my toes for seven days through showers and hot baths and swimming in the lake. And the only ones that have fallen off are my pinky toe ones. These earrings are garbage and I shouldn't be surprised given how cheap they were. The ear part there broke off the second that I tried to put them in my ear. Now I want to talk about the future of my channel. And as I do so, I'm going to be showing you some of the other things I've been working on um, without commentary on them, probably. So I am an artist and an art instructor, and I teach and make many, many, many kinds of art from regular traditional art to many, many kinds of crafts. And for those of you who have been with me from the beginning here, you know that we have had our house on the market for a year and we've been waiting to move and we are now approaching the date where we will be moving. And I don't know anything. I don't know where we're moving. I don't know what kind of dwelling we will be in. I don't know if I will have an art studio or not. I don't know if I'll have a place where I can edit videos uh, accurately or quietly, you know, without noise. So um, I'm not sure how often I will be posting between now and say September. I do have a lot of things that I could do um, and I know that I've promised you tutorials on the sliding library ladder. And here you can see I put the spiral staircase into my eternal bookstore um, that I converted to the room box. I just don't think that I'm going to be able to get to those things between now and when we move. But here is what they look like. So maybe if you want to do them, you can see where I positioned it and how I made the previous staircase into an entryway. Um, I have been working on these little sun catchers. See the big one in my window? I've been making some small ones um, because I have an idea that I can do a series of videos where I show you how to make something in miniature like this and how you can make it full size for your home your regular house versus your doll house. I think a lot of you found me via doll making and miniature making, and I'm worried that if I switch over to not making miniatures all the time, I might lose out on some of you, and I've really enjoyed my interactions with you. So let me know how you feel about that. I thought I would start off maybe with these stained glass windows that are just made from UV resin because I think you could use them in any kind of doll house. And of course, I'm always going to be making things related to dolls and miniatures, but I just usually don't do that constantly all the time. For example, right now I'm working on embroidering this Kantha quilt, and I don't know if you have any interest in embroidery like this or this, which I made out of fabric scraps or this out of wool applique. I have been sewing. I've been make. I did this upholstery on my grandmother's sewing box. And then I did another kind of upholstery using a placemat on my mother-in-law's step stool here. I'm still watching a lot of mudlarking content and taking care of little Fuzz McGee here, who's actually doing quite well on his gaba penton with his bad teeth. He's a good boy. So I have a lot of things happening and a lot of things to share. So let me know in the comments if there are other kinds of art that you do or that you're interested in, or if you've ever seen anything in some of my videos that interests you that I didn't do a tutorial on. And for now, I'm going to say 
I'm doing a lot of packing and swimming and enjoying this lake, which it's going to be hard to leave, but it's a new chapter in life and I'm looking forward to just being done with this move. So thanks for watching. I hope you will stick with me and I will see you soon. Take care.